Hey, how you all going? It's Jai, that Aussie metal guy here with Crank.com and with that metal station. And today I'm getting to have a chat with supernova fueled space disco synth metal coming to a galaxy near you, Alpha Budis. And we got Al- Aussie Mandy today, man. Cheers for joining me, man. Thanks for having me, Jay. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good, man. I'm good. Um, it's good to finally have a chat with you. I come across your music, I think, um, a couple of years ago off one of the um, earlier EPs. I think it may have awesome. been Space Vikings and Other Stories was the one. I oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come across, man, and I just uh, dig the whole themes you have going there and everything. Can you tell me first, how did Alpha Buddhist first start, man? Yeah, sure. Uh, so it's a, it's a kind of funny story because it started as a just a synthwave project um i had to stop playing guitar for a whole year because of uh, tendonitis and so i was like messing around with you know ableton live and making electronic music and a friend of mine uh the co-founder of alpha botus he like started posting these kind of synth based sounds but uh songs on, on like soundcloud but he had no like mixing you know, skills or whatnot. So it was just like programming those with like Game Boy sounds or, or like NES sounds. And so we we made the first EP together and then uh, just, you know, riffing off what um, bands like Carpenter Brit or Perturbator were doing in the synthwave scene or the, you know, the Drive soundtrack, the Hotline Miami soundtrack. Uh, and... So we put out the first EP and it's uh, June of 2017. And three days later, we got we get asked to play a show like that September. And we're like, sure, yeah, we'll make it work. Like, well, we have a band. Yeah. Um, and so we recruited uh, our drummer and our keyboardist slash singer back then to do that show. And then a lot of people came to that gig and they, they, like, they liked what we were doing. But a lot of people were like, yeah, like you should add vocals. Uh, so that was the next move. And that's when, you know, we started writing uh, Space Vikings and other stories. But yeah, it started like pure synth wave. And then when it came time to play that live, I don't play keyboards, uh, neither does my co-composer. So we were like, yeah, let's, you know, play those tunes with guitar and bass. And we're all metalheads. So that's kind of, you know, that's what we knew to make. Like, that's the kind of show we knew to put on. Yeah, and I wanted to talk about the beginning of that because you made that episode one there and then you've re-gone back now. You've got a whole band, you've got a filled out uh-huh. sound and you can hear that totally on the latest release, Jump to Alpha Buddhist, which comes out 24th of September. It must have been yeah. fun re-going back into that and redoing that whole uh, episode one and then adding in the special little um, Gajira cover in there as well. Yeah, it it was really fun because, you know, we've been playing like Jump to Alpha Botus. I think we've played that song at at every show we've done. It's kind of our theme song. And so when um, the the idea to do that came like in the middle of the pandemic, we were in lockdown and we were kind of we had written the next album. You know, we have like 20 songs written for next year, but we were like, how are we going to record this and, you know, jam those songs out when we can't meet? And so we figured we could work on the songs we already knew by heart and, and just kind of update them instead of just sitting there twiddling our thumbs. And it was really cool because when I made the first EP, I was, you know, like a baby. I, I had like two years of electronic music experience under my belt. And now I have six. So I could I could finally take these songs and bring them up to the standard I, I thought they deserved. Not that like, I'm not ashamed of the first EP, you know, it's it's like, I'm not ashamed of, of my first songs I wrote when I was 15, but I write better songs now, you know? Yeah, and it's still uh, up there on Bandcamp, so people can go back yeah. and get still get that one. So you're obviously still proud of that body and work. It's just being able to go back and give it a breath of fresh air with the whole band and more experience. Yeah, and also because when people heard that and then came to see us live, suddenly there's guitars, there's drums, there's saxophone. It's like, whoa, this is another band. It's, it's so we wanted to, you know, have a a recording of that live experience. And the Gajira cover was actually the first song we made off of that record because that was, they released that single in April of 2020. And then they stopped releasing 
the album because the pandemic hit. But I was so obsessed with that song. And I was like, this begs for a synth wave cover. Like the, the little guitar pattern they have going on, that's like, that's like a Depeche Mode song. And so, yeah, so we made that cover and then retroactively made the whole album around it. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. That's really cool, man. And it used to be really quite busy, though, I noticed through the pandemic. You've still, you still done the, um, the Codex Buddhas um, there as well. Mm-hmm. And you've got, that's the, like, the mixed one with a couple of tracks, a track off each. He's kind of picked out there, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And then you've done the Starway Ants EP. That one's groovy as hell. I liked it. You's do what feels right for the tracks. You don't just chuck lyrics and vocals in there just for the sake of doing it. If a track is grooving and you're going with it, just leave it be. Yeah. Yeah. Um, We like a lot of bands are kind of saying they're like beyond, you know, they're not just death metal. They're like a bunch of different genres and stuff. And and sometimes it sounds pretentious, but for us, it's really like we write, multiple genres but it's like some of it is power metal some of it is is synth wave and, and other is like a weird mix some of it is more disco uh and, and we don't we don't have to pigeonhole ourselves to a specific sound because as long as it fits within the stories and the the science fiction element you know we can in a science fiction movie you can have like metal and you can have synth and you can have disco uh because it's all, you know, tied to the movie and it makes sense. It's harder to make in an album if you have just like, if you're singing about daily life, it's kind of weird that you have suddenly like an epic song about space, but we're always singing about space, space. even when it's, yeah. <laughs> and that's what I like about, another thing I like about your music, it's not just the songs, you've built this whole story around each of the EPs as well. It's just not, oh yeah, here's your song. Years have gone and you've gone that it's unreal and I'm a big sci-fi nerd as well. So I just really um, dig the themes. Can you tell us a little bit about the story behind Alpha, um, the jump to Alpha Buddhist? Because if people really do want to check it out, you can go check the info on it as well on the um, yeah. camp there, which is really cool addition. Yeah. So we, the stories uh, originated because I didn't know how to write lyrics to that music. I was like, oh. I don't want to just put a bunch of cliche science fiction stuff on the songs because like I don't think I'm as good as Rob Alford to write lyrics so I can just you know throw songs about metal meltdown and and like raining fire from the sky or what whatever uh, Judas Priest are talking about so we figured we'd make it like a kind of a movie so the Jump to Alpha Botus album is it's kind of each song is an episode in a science fiction tv show or movie franchise and Uh, We're following the crew of the USS Neon, which is the ship that's on the cover. And the crew is basically the band. And they leave Earth to find a new planet, but they end up traveling into the far future. And so they find a planet that humanity can, you know, use as a a backup, but it's already full of people because it's 20,000 years in the future. And then they have to figure out how to get back home uh but of course you know it's a it's a movie so shenanigans ensue and they they don't quite make it home um so the first uh i think five episodes of that are on our band camp and our website um basically each song has like two small stories with it one before the song one after the song and we didn't want to write a whole novel for this this album like it, there wasn't enough time so what we made instead is we're kind of giving you the the um, in the next episode yeah segment of a tv show that doesn't exist uh so it's like telling so it, it gives you the right hi- imagery and the right headspace to listen to the songs uh so there are more of these coming because we're releasing a the final single of the album in uh late August. So on the 27th awesome. and there's going to be stories with that too. And then when the full album comes out, there's going to be even more stories. Um, yeah. They- yeah. As, as you were saying, it's been a, a tricky time on when to release albums and with this bloody thing that's going on in the world at the yeah. moment, we've all kind of been affected, but what was it like making this album? How, how did you just get in there? I know you probably would have done a lot of the production that yourself, you guys, but 
tell us a little bit about that process. So usually I, I write everything down. So I, you know, I give the guys like a guitar profile that has all of the parts and then they learn that they, they learn the parts. And usually we record, uh, it used to be in my garage. Now it's, I rent a proper studio, but, um, this time like the sax player recorded the sax parts in his bedroom and one of his roommates is studying audio engineering so he helped us you know get a good sax sound awesome. and then the bass player had to learn how to record uh his bass from home um and like he produces electronic music as well so he kind of knew his way around a daw but the recording part was not you know it was kind of his first time uh doing that by himself. Um, and I had to, I basically went to the singer's house with a mask and my laptop and my, my interface and my microphone. And then he would record, you know, the Gajira cover. Uh, I sing as well on the cover so that I yeah. could do easily, but like we had done the stowaway ants EP that way. And it was, it worked but it was hard. And so we were like, no, we're not making 20 songs that way. Like we're, we're going to pull our hair out. Uh, and this was our first time uh, not doing the mixing ourselves. So I, I was quite busy with, you know, the whole marketing and promotion and stuff for the band. And I was like, I don't want to disappear for four months to mix the damn thing. So we hired uh, David Fuller who did, he mastered, all of our previous albums. So we had a good working relationship with him. Uh, he did the mix. He did a fantastic job. Um, and we had Brandon all house to do the mastering again, bang up job that they did. Um, but it was, it was really great to have a project to work on because we had no shows to look forward to. Yeah. Um, we managed to like squeeze one in, in September last year, but, um, uh, you know, we played to a sold out audience of 40 people. Uh, <laughs> Were they sitting or standing? Yeah, it's everybody was sitting, yep. uh, you know, and in like, you had to come from the same house to be at the same table and, and all that stuff. We had a plexi in front of us, um, which I found quite great to have because <laughs> when you have a plexi in front of you, you see your reflection in it. So you don't have to look at your fretboard when you're playing. You can look at the crowd, but also see your fretboard in there. <laughs> that's <laughs> Andy. <laughs> yeah, that's like, that, that was kind of the, the silver lining to it all. Um, but now, of course, everybody's starting to get vaccinated here in Canada. Uh, shows are opening back up and they're making it so that if you're not vaccinated, you can't go. Um, so hopefully the shows we're starting, you know, to, pl to plan for this fall and this winter can go ahead and we can go back to being a proper band again. Uh, yeah. That's the thing trying to plan these shows and you book shows. You don't want to be really booking shows and having to cancel them, change them, then put them off to later in the year. Yeah. Yeah. It becomes quite tricky. So you just probably don't have anything like you do have something set you were saying. Yeah, so we have one show that I, I can't really talk about. Yeah, no, no, that's uh, fine. Just for people to keep their eyes open for Alpha will yeah. be on stage soon ish. And, and we're trying. Um, so we're, we're having our first rehearsal as a band uh, tomorrow. Yep. And it's the first time we've played together since September of last year. And, you know, trying to shake the raw stuff. And we're going to see if with the gear we have, we can like do a, a kind of a live stream. But yeah, what we'll probably end up doing is, you know, we'll record the show and then we'll live stream it and talk with the audience, you know, in between songs and stuff. So we can still have uh, the interaction going. But I don't think my computer can handle, you know, doing all of these, <laughs> all of that at the same time. It's going to melt. <laughs> yeah, it'll fry. Yeah, the artwork. I do do want to talk about the artwork because I love the yeah. artwork you have on all your albums. And there's something about artwork. People do get lost in the whole streaming and do forget about the art mm -hmm. as well. So we've been very lucky that like all of the artwork we've we've gotten was either from friends or from you know people we hollered at on Twitter. Uh, but 
our first records, including my my background here, was made with by Dave Peterson. Uh, he's a fantastic designer and uh, noise musician from Philadelphia. And the more recent pieces, we work with two artists. So we were working with one artist for the singles artwork for uh, Jump to Alpha Botus and Ecumenopolis. Uh, they were supposed to do the whole project, and I like we all loved their work. It was great, but they had to, you know take care of their mental health and their yeah. personal health. So they told us like after, after the Ecumenopolis single, I, I can't do anymore. And I asked like one of my good friends, uh, Alexandre Gauthier, kind of last, last minute to do that cover art for the album. Um, and he jumped in and he made an amazing piece. Like I'm, I'm just flabbergasted that this gets to be on my music. Yeah, I'm looking uh, at it right now. It's really cool. It's got all you guys in there and your, your space outfits. It's got the yeah. ship and, a, you know, the world down there as well and the jumped alpha bonus there. It's it's really well done. And and what we wanted was kind of a movie poster yeah. as much as an album art because, you know, the movie is like the soundtrack to a fake movie. Uh, the, the, <laughs> the album's a soundtrack to a fake movie. And, and those, you know, classic uh, War of the Worlds or... Um, Star Wars posters from the 70s and 80s had all like these multiple layers with the characters in front and then the planets and, and all that stuff. And we wanted to, to emulate that. And right from the get go, uh, Alexandre just got it. And um, so, yeah, I think album art is really important, even though now people are seeing it like on a small thumbnail on Spotify. Uh, you know, I picked up some of my favorite records because the art was cool yeah um, i've done the same and that was kind of like my google before all this internet you know I'd yeah. get the get the cd go home rip open the cd read the lyrics then you get to the end you'd read the little the linear notes at the end and they'd be thanking this band and that band i'm like oh well i've got to go check that band out now i'm gonna yeah. kind of do that and you know the artwork was always fancy i still got a a lot of my CDs back from when I was younger and I went and got the records as well because, you know, having those physicals, us metalheads where we have this obsession with wanting to hold a lot of physical things and that's where records and merch and buying stuff yep. is real still equal quite relevant in the metal scene because you know unlike yep. the hip-hop and the dance and the pop shit people will just go download that or whatever with metalheads we want to have those physical copies still yeah and and even though like i am trying to figure out a way to do um i, I don't want to do vinyl because i i don't um it's such like a high cost of entry yes. for us as a band but i want to figure out a way to do like a, a big artwork packaging so maybe like make like a vinyl sleeve, but no record in it. It's just, you know, you buy the sleeve, you get like a, a huge um, liner with like all of the lyrics and stuff. We're, we're, we're finding, figuring out ways. Um, for the next record, we're writing a whole book basically. Um, <laughs> so we're probably going to do like a super deluxe package where you get all of the stories in a book with all of the artwork and, and all of that. But I might also be talking out of my ass because it's a we'll support thing too. Sleep. You want to get everyone, get along and support the album as well. Not just listen to it yeah. over on Spotify. You like alpha bonus, go, go buy the, the merch band camps. Are really? That's why I like platforms like Bandcamp. Is that the best place you can get over and people can pre-order uh, the yeah. album? And you've got a website. I think you were saying as well. Did you want to give that a shout out too? Yeah, so we have uh, alphabotusband.bandcamp.com and alphabotusmusic.com. Uh, honestly, the, the website is a great place to read the stories and, and kind of learn about us as a band. Uh, but Bandcamp is the easiest way to buy. Yeah. And also, what I like about Bandcamp is, you know, yesterday was Bandcamp Friday, and I... I like spent the whole day talking about music with people there and just seeing those, those little icons of like supported by and seeing more and more faces add up. It's just, it just makes my day, you know, and, and people are so kind when they write reviews on there. Uh, they are. We had like Lisa Mann from white crone wrote a review to, of our space Vikings album, but it was like about her going to the cinema in the eighties with her friends and watching a movie and the, and the movie was space Vikings. Ah. And, and like, 
she wrote like a story instead of a review and i was just yes i'm gonna frame this <laughs> yeah nice that's cool was it lisa man metal put the doritos uh, in this ziploc yeah. man that bag makes too much noise so i stuffed the snacks into my coat pocket as we stumble oh yeah that's cool yeah, and she goes yeah, and right into it. Space Fog reads a sign. We all high-five each other and enter the places packed just as we assumed. We find a few spots in the back and settle in. Dude, this is going to put Laser Floyd to shame. It was fantastic indeed. We went back the next night. Favourite track, Space Vikings. That's really cool. And then done it like a full movie review. Yeah. That's awesome. Lisa, man, man. That's pretty cool, man. That's really cool. Yeah. And it is really nice to get those comments. And you know these are legit fans getting in and supporting yeah. it going in and buying the album and you know from the heart it's awesome yeah and and uh i, I do want to shout out uh lisa's band white crone it's a fantastic oh. traditional heavy metal project uh she's really killing it i'm gonna play the and, track on my show later um stargazer oh, i think was yeah. well didn't she just do a recently do a rainbow yeah what? it's oh, the only it's funny how this is all connected all the music scene it's crazy the, the only reason i'm mad about that cover is that we were thinking of doing a <laughs> cover of stargazer and now she's done such a good one that i i feel intimidated uh, <laughs> when i play this on the radio because i'll do this on my show as well i'll make sure i play that track with it too yeah it's it's uh and and you know you, you mentioned it all being connected and that's that's one of the things I like about the metal scene. Uh, it's, you know, you get on Twitter and you start talking about whatever metal band and you're going to find tons of people who just love that shit and you're going to talk to them about everything. And then every time a new album comes out, it's like, oh, have you checked this new record? And then we, we like this. I discover so much, you, you know, music that I would have never found just through talking with all of these people or like digging through Bandcamp recommendations. And it's great because the metal section of Twitter has basically none of the, you know, the, the, the hate and the, the annoying parts of the rest of Twitter. Like yeah. they're, they're at least the section I'm in, I'm, maybe I'm lucky, but, <laughs> and, and, you know, you talk with these musicians from, you know, another generation and another country and you get along just fine because the music connects you in, into this little bubble, you know, that is metal. That's what I love about the metal scene. Even going to shows, you go by yourself and like I started doing this um, four, nearly five years ago, going to shows by myself and I've met so many great people in the scene just doing it. I've had a great time. Yeah, it's good going with your friends, but, you know, getting out there and meeting new people in the metal scene because you're all in this together. It's like one big metal family. You go into yeah. a show and I took one guy once to his first metal show and his Mrs. Law, they're all going to be aggro metal heads. He had the best time ever. He was like, man, this is so cool. The people are great. Met some new people people and it's like that yeah just about every show you go to i i remember uh like five years ago maybe I, I went to see uh between the buried and me and they were touring with deaf heaven and we were in the pit and there was like uh um like two teenagers and it was their first show and like they were there with their parents and and it was like you know two 15 year old girls just having the time of their life and we just instant instantly like there was like a circle you know they were like in the pit but we kind of made them their own little pit yeah so they could they could mosh without you know getting slammed getting around. getting smacked by by bigger dudes or whatnot but it was just like nobody asked for it it just you know they're having the time of their life we're just going to give them you know a protective bubble so they can have that space and enjoy you know their first metal show and, and not remember you know, fear or anything, just remember the good times. Um, yeah, walk out with a positive experience as well, not going, oh, I had some 30-year-old smelly dude smash into me all night. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, after after a couple of shows, you get used to those. And and, yeah. and and even then, what I also like is, you know, I would go to a bunch of shows in, in Montreal and, and I would meet people only at these shows. And I would talk with the same, like, 10 people at every show. And they're kind of friends that I don't see outside of a mosh pit. You know, it's, it's, I've had that uh, same experience and still have that same experience. It's really cool. There's one guy with a hat and I'm like, it's hat dude again. And then I just go over and chat to him and it's always so loud. I always forget to ask hat dude's name. I'm like, I've got to get his <laughs> name. And then by the time I get his name and go back and see him a couple of months later, another gig, I'm like, man, I forgot hat dude's name. Now I'm just going to have to pretend I remember it. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, shows shows are great. I they're starting, you know, starting to pop back up here, and I'm I'm gonna, you know, start buying tickets like crazy. I've been saving money, just like the 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 metal show fund. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's it. Uh, Ozzy, we better let you get about the rest of your day. Ozzy Mandius, Alpha Botus, this has been an absolute pleasure. Everyone, jump to Alpha Botus. is out 24th of September. You can also head over to Bandcamp and grab all their bloody music because it's the way to go and leave some great reviews as well. Ozzy Mandius reads them. Cheers, mate. Do you have any last words, shout-outs, or thank yous you'd like to add in there, mate? Thank you so much for having us. Uh, there's a single that just dropping on the 27th of August, and it's our heaviest track yet. Uh, if you want to listen to the older version of that, it's called Serpent's Nebula. It's on Bandcamp and it's on Spotify and everywhere else. But the new one is like so much heavier. Uh, yeah, so is. yeah, cheers for having us. It was a great time and uh, have a great day. Yeah, awesome. Thank you very much. You have a lovely day. Cheers, mate. G'day. Before we get stuck into this great interview, if you all could hit the like and subscribe button. That would be bloody awesome, and it mean you all keep up to date with all the great interviews brought to you by myself, Crank.com, and that metalstation.com. The only station with more metal than your Mars kettle. Cheers, guys. <laughs>